Welcome back, Wolfpack. Verlos here to the last Fan Fridays for the week, and this is where things get awesome. This is where things get crazy. This is a strategy I have been waiting to review since before Pokemon Sun and Moon was released. And guys, we have more than one. So we have Mark right here. Liquid Voice Primarina makes its round debut. The round Liquid Voice. I can't wait to see how it performs. But then Seeker coming in as well. Seeker and their Primarina. We know it's hype. Liquid Voice Primarina round strats. I'm going to show like a battle from each of them. Starting off with Mark. And let's see how it plays out. And there's the classic, guys. That is what we're looking for right now. Just the ultimate in round. Following it up with other very strong round Pokemon as well. We had like what well, you don't need Primarina to bring the liquid voice to get stabbed to I mean you do but when you, when you have Porygon round already gets stabbed right there We have pixelate into that with the Sylveon so we've seen insane damage before But now it's with the Primarina with that high amount of special fence Electrode crazy speed got a speed buff in the seventh generation outspeeding that guard shop Primarina immediate follow-up into the round are we going to see the instant one shop onto the guard shop? It's already over that's what I was waiting for, guys. So, Toxic onto the Primarina. That's about the most that uh, the Toxpec's gonna do. Fortunately, this this isn't like, uh, you know, Water Spout. Health doesn't matter. We're just gonna be doing tons of damage. Mimikyu. Going to make this one just a little interesting because, unfortunately, there is, like, a slight weakness to this in Ghost-type Pokemon. But, at the same time, that's what you have Primarina for, you know? You can throw out a round on one Pokemon and then have round hit on another Pokemon and then you're going to be good to go. Uh, plus two, Mimikyu with that Swords Dance. We're going to see what it can do because, like, this is just going to break. Next time, next turn is going to be Shadow Sneak. So, so Shadow Sneak plus two, not threatening insane amounts of damage. We can still have the uh, combo happen with Electrode right here. And then Toxpex with that Infestation, going for the Toxic Infestation, trying to remove the uh, threat of the Primarina in just a couple turns, because this is going to stack and do crazy damage. But uh, Primarina, it doesn't worry, but it doesn't need to switch out. It's just going to ruin everything. So Electrode, its round isn't the most crazy damage. So actually tagging Toxpex just a little bit. Uh, I think Garchomp took roughly the same percentage, but then the round on to Mimikyu, it's a one-hit KO, and this is what I was talking about with Primarina being terrifying with that round potential. Like, that's where the Liquid Voice breaks right there, and I feel that that's the most you can get out of it. Like, Hyper Voice hitting both opponents, I guess it's better than Surf hitting your ally, but really, you need that single target, stacked damage, bonus damage on top of bonus damage, Lopunny's coming in, but it doesn't matter how fast- well, actually, kind of does, because I guess if it goes for the uh, fake out, you know, that's going to be Lopunny using in speed, but if Electrode is still alive at the end of the turn, you bring in Sylveon, and then Sylveon is able to go for the round, and I think that's what's happening right now. Just kind of saying, okay, if, if Electrode's alive, everything else is going to be fine. Lopunny actually trying to high jump kick it, taking the unnecessary damage, and Primarina follows up the round, and never mind. I'm about to say, like, Regardless, you just keep that Electrode alive because then Sylveon comes in and you clean out the team from there. Now we are down to the Toxpex. Toxpex coming in with that Liquidation. Uh, that might... That's going to do it on the Primarina. I think we have enough Poison Turns into that Infestation. Yep, surviving on the one hit points. That's going to be an Infestation. But Primarina showing that it is... It's incredible when you actually play the strat like this. I'm wondering if that's like the intent of Game Freak. If they if they meant Primarina to play this, or if this is one of those like crazy broken strats. And now that it's finally unlocked, we get to enjoy it. So round on Tox Specs, not a crazy amount of damage. But then we have the Porygon Z coming in. Cleaning up the Toxapex. That is power, guys. That is is why round gets crazy because you stab into a 120 base power move like that on high special attacking Pokemon and that is what I was waiting for and it did not disappoint. I was actually a little excited because I covered the round strategy. Also, we're going to set up a uh, Seeker's Battle because I covered the strategy a few times and when I was like thinking about it, um, yeah, like, I was running damage calculations, and it just did not disappoint. All the damage calculations I was looking at just checked out and felt really good. But Seeker, bringing us a little bit of a change to the strats right now. Actually, we have a Bruxish, so trying to stop out any priority. A fake out can shut down round. I'm actually trying to think about it from a round versus round standpoint. Like, whoever gets that first outspeed just absolutely commands the battle from there. So, speed ties get, uh, pretty nutty. So Bruxish is going to come in, and then we also have the Mega Swamper. 
I'm wondering, like, is Bruxus going for the Rain Dance and then Pre Marina is just going to do, like, crazy amounts of damage? Like, Rain Dance into a Hyper Voice for Stab works, or you just run fast Bruxus. I, I don't know. I, I guess you just kind of keep it there as a support. Like, okay, what's the difference between an Electrode and, like, say, a Scarfed Bruxus? Uh, Electrode does have that Protect Outplay potential, but, I mean, that... That's damage, guys. That is terrifying amounts of damage when you one-shot the Audino. Audino is meant to be just the most stable rock. Can't break it down. Gets the free tri trick room. But yeah, Bruxish, now we're going to go round into the Swamper. Swamper, yeah, it took a little bit of damage, but then Primarina following it up. Is that going to be another KO? Christ. And... Sure, like, we probably lose Primarina. No, I was about to say, we probably lose Primarina right now, but we don't. Bruxish going down. The opponent actually making a smart play right there, understanding that Bruxish is the round catalyst. But by shutting out priority, you do add another layer to this. And I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't expect anything less from Seeker in this case. Because pl really playing up on the knowledge of Primarina, probably been looking forward to this as long as I have. Like, once those leaks came out, it's like, I'm in love with this Pokemon, and I'm going to make this strat work. So, that is going to be the Mega Salamence. Yeah, like, okay. Let's let's take a very strong Pokemon and then follow it up with an insane... Oh my goodness, it's also a round Salamence. Oh my goodness, the Aerial A into the Decidueye. Not enough to one-shot because remember, it does start off with that low base power. And then Sylveon, very high amounts of special defense. That's, that's about right. Alright, so... Good, we don't one-hit KO absolutely everything all the time. And Sylveon healing up massively off that Draining Kiss. Decidueye going to come in with that Leaf Blade. That's going to be Primarina going down off the damage. But unless it's like Quick Attack Sylveon to finish off these Salamence, I think we're going to be okay. And then Porygon Z has damage as well. So the opponent actually finding the hits, the good return damage. Round comes in. That's going to be enough to take out Decidueye. And then Porygon follows up immediately. And Sylveon is gone. Oh, yeah, this is, this, this battle right here, share it with all your friends, we are reviving Pokemon from this moment, Pokemon's been a little down, been a little dead, uh, Ultra Sonic Moon didn't go over too well, people are just like, wait, why are we still investing time into, po into the 7th generation, we have Nintendo Switch coming out soon, and because of that, everything's pretty low, too much hacking, all that, all that bad stuff going on, but this, these battles right here, should be enough to bring everyone back into Pokemon, let's, let's make this a large effort to kind of show that Pokemon is alive and well, and let's actually, let's keep throwing out some battles, because these are exciting, it's just like, instant, first turn, let's go. Okay, and now I'm just interested at this point, so let's go into the Pelipper, into the Porygon, and so Pelipper, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, you don't want Scarf it, it's not like the most insane fast Pokemon, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where the Scarf is depending on how, how many, like, different iterations of the team there are, if Bruxish isn't on, then that means the Pelipper, or not the Pelipper, the Porygon could be Scarfed, if not, Porygon's still doing insane amounts of damage, Primarine on standby, is this a Tailwind Pelipper for Rain, that way you get even more damage on the round, worst case scenario, Salamence and Primarine on the field at the same time, Salamence still brings a lot of speed, outspeeds, craziness, so we got this right now, and then Pre, or not Primarine, Mimikyu, leading off with Swords Dance, yeah, so we're not seeing an insane amount of speed, but Pelipper, there's the Tailwind. There's that speed snowball. What is the Porygon going to do about it as Lantern goes for the Discharge? Not the best move. Except it almost takes down the Pelipper. But breaking your own Mimikyu's disguise, especially against a round team, even though the opponent can't really know it's a round team, not really that great. But Pelipper, there's the item. That's going to be a Focus Sash. And we see a process from the Porygon, but actually... That's not the worst thing. So Porygon finds time to get a nasty plot. And if Pelipper has... Okay, I was about to say, I don't even know what Pelipper's going to do. That's going to be the Scald right there. Hitting good amounts of damage onto Mimikyu. Not enough to KO, but does find the burn. So Mimikyu's Swords Dance means nothing right now. Mimikyu will play rough the Porygon Z. That burn keeping Porygon Z alive. I, I saw the crit, but yeah, it's still cutting down that damage. Ooh. Citrus Berry, Porygon Z. I guess you can go max hit point investment. Like, Porygon. Porygon 2, very tanky. Porygon Z actually has surprising amount of innate bulk behind it. So you max out hit points, max out special attack, and then you just round strat with it, and you should be just fine. So there's the Shadow Ball, kind of keeping the Porygon all nice and good. And yeah, if you can't one-shot that Porygon, it's killing you. That That's how this breaks down. So now we have Rain, Tailwind, Round, Primarina... 
but I don't think Primarina is going to find the optimal damage because of that paralysis on the Porygon Z. So Primarina now leading with that round. How much does it do to an Absol? Okay then. And that's why also Porygon's paralysis doesn't mean anything because that speed reduction, unless it's unless it's a full paralysis, just kind of gets negated into full damage. Ninetales is on the field. The opponent does not want to have anything to do with this battle anymore. He just wants to go home. But Fire Blast from the Ninetales in the rain is not going to do any damage. Nope. And then the hit point invested uh, Porygon is going to be fine. Primarina with that round. On to Ninetales. Good night. That's going to be some huge damage. And then we see that nasty plot from the Porygon. How much will the follow-up round... Unless unlucky. <laughs> unless unlucky. I feel that that was a one-hit KO coming in from that uh, just Onsa Lantern. Primarina and Porygon will go down. Critical hit, big damage, huge discharge. Everything kind of falling, falling apart, but not really too terribly. Like, Lantern is not going to be able to sweep it against a Salamence. And that needed, like, the most optimal luck ever to make it happen. Uh, Intimidate's not going to matter, but the Lantern, surprisingly, being the main Pokemon staying alive this entire game, as now we go into Salamence, does it have the Earthquake? Is it just going to, like, two-tap with the Aerial Eight? Actually, no, Lantern's pretty bulky. It's not like a one-shot Pokemon. But Mixed. Okay. Gets the Hydro Pump with the Rain Boosting, even though Resisted still hits hard. That Discharge comes through. The rain's going to stop, the leftovers is going to heal, and now this is actually a little bit of a closer match than I ever expected. Never mind, Draco Meteor. So, I, okay, cheesing out that extra turn, softening up the lantern into that Draco Meteor, that's the KO right there, so it does make sense. I'm like, oh, where's our physical Salamence? Well, it's using round, so it's actually special, and then that Draco Meteor from a special Salamence is going to be stupid amounts of damage. And when you think about that, Hydro Pump is actually like a neutral one-hit KO in Rain. Because Lantern resisted and also has a lot more bulkiness than your average Pokemon. So that's going to be a battle. It, get, it got a little sloppy. But I mean, we got to see how much damage Primarina has. Oh my goodness. So yeah, this is the one to like, comment, subscribe. Everything is ridiculous with these strats. If you want to be on Fan Fries, submit some battle codes down below. It's been rough. And also, my note is, if your opponent has under level 50 Pokemon, please don't submit. If your opponent is like free battle spot, not playing good, if their Tapu Kogo gets outsped by your Silvalli, please don't submit me the battle. We, we still need something competitive, guys. But overall, there we go. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope you guys enjoyed Fan Fries. Have a great day. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you in the next one.